Yes, welcome back, dear viewers of Imam Hussein TV, um, to this particular show, Morning Barakah, where in this particular segment, we're actually focusing on the, the lungs, um, in particular, um, the diseases affected with the lungs. And, and in previous, uh, sub, previous conversations, we've uh, focused on smoking, um, be it the, the, the cigarettes or the, the shisha or the e-cigarettes. Um, today, we're going to be focusing more um, along uh, you know, the, the, the direct diseases associated with smoking. And, and of course, to discuss this, as always, for this particular aspect, uh, our resident expert within this field, um, Dr. Saeed Yasser Madani, thank you so much for, for, for your time once again. Um, so yeah, Zara, we were, we, we were talking about actually before, before we went on air in terms of the, the most common kind of disease people associate mm. cigarettes or smoking with is, is lung cancer. Yes. But actually there is, there's, more, there's more to mm. it than that. Sure. Doctor. Uh, so uh, one of the most common lung conditions, uh, probably uh, after asthma, in terms of its prevalence, and how common it is, is COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Um, and that by and large is a smoking related, smoking caused lung disease. It's very common, about 1.2 million people um, have confirmed COPD in the UK, so that's about 2% of the population and it's about, um, uh, it's about 4% of those who are above the age of 45. Um, it's a combination of, uh, and, that, and that's just people that, that we know are diagnosed with COPD, yeah. so that's 1.2. There are uh, about another 2 million that we don't know that are undiagnosed to have yeah. COPD. So we think about 3 million people have COPD, uh, so it's quite a lot of people. Um, and, and COPD consists of two conditions, one chronic bronchitis, which is inflammation of the airways. Um, and we talked about anatomy of the lungs in the first episode, tubes being the airways, and then emphysema is the other part of this condition, COPD, um, which is destruction of the air sacs, the alveoli, where okay. the major function of the lung happens, which is the gas transfer. We talked about this mm -hmm. again in yeah. the first episode. Um, so inevitably, people that have COPD have a mixture of both of these two together. Um, some people can have a bit of one more than the other, but it, in actual fact, in reality, people have chronic bronchitis and emphysema. So what are the symptoms, or what, what, what do people go through when they have this So symptoms, symptoms are cough, a chronic cough, and it's not just a smoker's cough. Yeah. This is a persistent cough. Now, smokers can have a cough as well. It's often drier than people with COPD. People with COPD often bring phlegm up. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Not always, but that's, it's quite common for, for them to bring mm. phlegm up. Um, and breathlessness and wheeze. Remember we mentioned wheeze. Wheeze is a, is a, is a symptom of, of the tubes of the airways when the airways are tightened. Mm. So um, asthma is also a condition that causes wheeze because again, it affects yeah. the tube. Yeah. So in bronchitis, the tubes are narrowed. The difference with COPD and asthma is with asthma, it's a variable disease. There's times when the airways are completely patent and open, other times it's narrowed. With COPD, they're always narrowed. And when you have an infection on top, they get narrow. Mm. Okay, so wheeze, breathlessness, cough, and phlegm, those are the conditions, those are, those are the symptoms. People with COPD are prone to chest infections. Just like you get asthma attacks, they have flare-ups or, or attacks of their COPD where they normally due to an infection, sometimes environmental triggers, but more commonly due to infection, which can be virus or bacterial, mm. they have a flare-up of their chest and they need a course of steroids and antibiotics for that. So we talked a lot about um, the, the, the time frame where you can actually um, find out after 20, 30 years the effects of, of, of smoking. Mm. Um, with this particular condition, is it, is it something that happens after maybe five years, six years, seven years of smoking, 10 years, 20 years? Yeah, so um, I, I don't think we frame. know for sure how many years, but there's a lag. There's a lag. It doesn't happen straight away. Just you start smoking and straight away you develop no, no, this condition. Course, yeah. No, the lag, lag of, uh, you know, several decades, probably more than a decade, uh, I would say, you know, tw tw 20 years at least. Uh, and so we rarely diagnose this condition in anyone below the age of, you know, 45. 40, 45. Okay. Um, people can have emphysema for other reasons, which we'll talk about later yeah. if we have time. But um, 
normally uh, this condition happens in someone that started smoking in their 20s, for example, has continued smoking heavily, and then in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, develops this condition. Right. So there is a lag. Mm. So in terms of the actual condition as well, because what you mentioned in terms of the coughing and, and, and the wheezing, is this kind of reversible? Can you, can you get something to sort it out? So it's not, it's not a reversible disease, unfortunately, mm. and the damage that's been done in the lungs, you know, the anatomical, geographic, structural damage the emphysema, the destruction of the alveoli. It's, it's not, not something the body can repair itself. It's not reversible. So, so um, sorry. Go ahead, no, please. Um, I was going to say that you mentioned about the antibiotics being treatment um, mm. as a form of treatment. Is there anything else that people can? Yeah, so antibiotics to treat the flare up, but the long term management of the condition is, you know, there's like a pyramid of, of, of treatments, uh, and at the top are the things that are the most effective things. Mm -hmm which are actually the cheapest things. Mm. So getting the flu jab, influenza vaccination, and the pneumonia vaccination is very important. It doesn't treat the condition, yeah. right? The condition is there. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't reverse the condition, but it tries to limit um, or prevent those infections which can be f fatal or damaging in the presence of yeah. someone who's got COPD, mm. all right? There's other things such as stopping smoking and smoking cessation, extremely yeah. important. Probably the only thing that that reduces the damage, the ongoing damage to the lungs, yeah. right? Because okay. we know that it's a irreversible condition. We think that in many people it's a progressive condition, but mm -hmm. if you stop smoking, it may not necessarily progress. We now know in, in more recent studies, um, but it won't regress either, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But the only thing we can really do to do that is to stop smoking, to either slow down the progression or stop the progression. Um, and then other things like keeping very active. So yeah. people who are affected because of breathlessness by this condition, there's a, a program called pulmonary rehabilitation. Eight week program, twice a week, where people go and do aerobic exercises and they're taught to do that in a gym by a physiotherapist. This is all under the NHS, the GP can refer to that. Every local locality will have this service. And in addition to the exercises, um, which people should continue doing at home after this, uh, then there's also an educational part to this program, so pulmonary rehabilitation. And then there's medical treatments, there's pharmacotherapy, so there's inhalers. Right. Mm. Again, they don't reverse the condition, but they help to reduce the infections, reduce the flare-ups, and improve the symptoms and quality of life. So when it comes to, obviously, when it comes to the, the respiratory diseases, um, smoking is obviously one of the major causes for that. Um, specifically when it comes to emphysema or CO, PD, is smoking the only thing that can cause that? Or no, that's things? a very good question. We say about somewhere in the region of 95 to 98% of, of emphysema is due to smoking, mm. but actually there's, there are other things that can, other environmental things that can, that can do it. Um, cadmium uh, and, and coal, in, in, in the case of coal miners, mm. um, the dust that they come into contact with can cause COPD as well. These are less well studied and less well recognized uh, and much less common. Mm. But then there's a condition which is called alpha anti-1 trypsin deficiency, right. which is a protein um, in the human body which is produced in the liver. If there's a deficiency of that condition, then there's, that causes emphysema and destruction of the, uh, of the alveoli. alveoli. And these people get emphysema earlier in life than right. COPD. So right. by the age they're in their 30s, they could be diagnosed with emphysema. Wow. Right? So these people, it's even more important to not smoke than these mm. people. Because mm. if they have that deficiency of this protein and they smoke, they're more likely to do even more damage more to damage. them. What's the long-term prognosis of people that develop an irreversible condition like COPD? Yeah, so that's, that's actually a very good question. Um, it's very difficult to prognosticate in conditions such as COPD and other conditions that ca cause chronic organ failure, mm. unlike cancer. It's, it's much easier in cancer to say to someone, look, based on how extensive your cancer is, you have X number of months or months okay. or weeks or years. Okay. With these, it's much more difficult to prognosticate and give specific figures. Um, it all depends on how severe the COPD is. Mm. Um, and the things that we look at in terms of defining the severity of COPD are how frequently people get infections, how frequently they are admitted to hospital, how disabled they are. Yeah. Some people get so breathless that they can only walk within the house. 
some people become housebound. Wow. I mean, I, I don't want to scare people, but I see this because I'm yeah. a lung specialist and also yeah. because I'm a hospital physician. Yeah. So the, I see the worst of the worst mm. yeah. rather than the GP, for example. GPs also look after these patients and they refer yeah. them to yeah. us. Um, but I, I see the more severe end of the spectrum. Right. So people that are literally housebound, people that are, have developed respiratory failure and require oxygen all the time, wow. or even a machine to breathe at night to help them breathe. Um, you know, th these people are coming towards the end of life. Really? They probably have several years to live. And it could require one pneumonia and they could die. So, so actually the prognosis in people with very advanced COPD is poor. And you know, we have systems in place, such as referral to palliative care, who are in the community to help us manage people's symptoms and you know, avoidance admission teams to try to manage people in the community and COPD teams because COPD very much is a condition that is amenable to treatment within the community. Mm. Um, so we've had discussions um, about sort of organ transplant, you know, mm. um, how, is that something as a treatment as well? For yeah, yeah, so the problem with COPD um, though mm. is by the time they're that severe, yeah. they've kind of um, missed the boat to be transplanted because really? they've become so so deconditioned by yeah. deconditioned i mean they've become so frail and so weak because of their condition uh you know that vicious cycle of i'm breathless therefore i spend most of the time in bed and chair i don't go out therefore the whole body becomes weak yeah. mm. the muscles become weak that going through a major operation yeah. such as a lung transplant be fatal. is probably not in their best interest and yeah. probably will have harm yeah. So they'll, they'll receive a pair of lungs which go to someone else that could save their lives, yeah. Yeah. who is better candidate for a lung transplant mm. than these people. So these people often don't even get referred to lung transplant. Wow. Now we are referring more people to lung transplant you know, mm. th than previous years. People with emphysema uh, that is due to alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency often get diagnosed earlier and are younger. Mm. So these people get transplanted more often than COPD patients. But I have done lung transplant, as, in fact, last year as a, in, in, a, in, in a, one of, we only have five UK adult lung transplant centres and I've worked in one of those last year. And, and we did use to transplant COPD patients. So if they get referred to us probably before the age of 70, then we can consider lung transplantation. Wow. So it just makes you wonder, does it have any yeah. implications? And, you know, yeah. even if you went for an organ donor, um, for donor, but you need yeah. to have the match and how important it is yeah. to donate. Um, uh, and if they lungs. continue smoking, then they, we don't transplant them. No. But it's, it's very interesting. So because, because a, lot of, a lot of the times, you know, people uh, who hear stories of smoking and, the, and mm. the, you know, look, it's a message to the, to the viewers and probably to myself as well. If you want to live a life um, where you're almost bed bound, you can't really move out the, the house without you know, yeah. failing to breathe and you've got these, all these little machines trying just to keep you alive, then you know, go ahead. But w from first hand experience, I'm an expert in, 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 in this field, he's telling me that, well he's telling us that he, he sees the end of the, ex end of the spectrum. Yeah. He's seeing the, the, the end results of smoking over and continuous. And it's low quality start, you know. And it's the, the quality of life is, is almost... Yeah, it's quite nothing. sad actually, it's quite sad. But I mean, it's one of the commonest conditions that I treat COPD. Mm. Uh, and it's by and large due to cigarette smoke, you know. Yeah. By and large, and I can say almost always. Yeah, you, you know. could prevent it, you could stop And it. it's completely preventable. Yeah. And, and unfortunately people that smoke and, and you know, whatever justifications they have for it, if they saw this aspect, yes. you, know, they, yeah. you know, there's one video that I love sharing on Facebook because Facebook now recycles videos that you've used three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And every time it tells me on this day you use this video, yeah, 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 I yeah. share it again, yeah. is, is the black lungs from, a, from someone who obviously died and, uh, and the lungs are completely black from wow. previous smoking. You know, if you actually saw what's happening inside your body, yeah. if you saw those people who have severe emphysema, severe lung disease and how they're living, you probably wouldn't smoke, you know. Um, and that's, we talked about shisha in the previous episode. I don't think, it's all about raising awareness so people can make an informed Absolutely. decision. Yeah. I don't think people know how harmful tobacco and the other chemicals and toxins are. Yeah. I'm not but saying that everyone yeah. develops emphysema from smoking. Yeah. There are some smokers that, for some reason, probably genetic factors, they don't have the predisposition, genetic predisposition, get away, but no one can know that. Yeah. There's no blood test or, you know, a test that I, where I can tell you, it's fine, you smoke, mm. you're not going to get emphysema. Yeah, mm -hmm. th that doesn't exist. And, you know, and it doesn't eliminate that 
harmful effects of smoking on the rest of the body. Yeah. We've talked about how harmful smoking is to the blood vessels, to the heart, to the brain, to everything else. Mm. You know, not just the lungs. So, you know, there's no win-win with smoking. There no is way. no win-win. Yes, I appreciate there's lots of stress in life and people use it as a, and shisha, and people use it as a way of de-stressing. But we have to think about alternatives, really. We have to consider other things. And I think it's important to look at, you know, when you sort of talk about informed decisions, and it's about really understanding that what you're doing to your body, because although we can't see it, it doesn't matter, you know, that harm is occurring, and you can perfectly prevent it. But then, you know, it's not just, oh, I need to de-stress, it's Friday night and I want to go for a smoke, oh, we'll see what happens. Really, these are life-changing um, implications, and really to get to that point where it's irreversible would be such a shame. Um, yeah. And um, for anybody who's been in hospitals and visited, and obviously mm. you're working, seeing these people, it's soul destroying to see how people yeah. suffer, really. Um, and we're fortunate where we have the hand to. Yeah, I mean, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a present. Exactly. Yeah. And the same way that we need to look after our souls through dua and salat and what have you, we have to look after our bodies. Definitely. Allah has given us this. And you know, you can make easily in a, in a, an argument that actually what we're doing is harming ourselves. And would the, would the Holy Prophet and the Ahlbayt you know, approve of, yeah. of this? Definitely. Had we known, and we do know, nowadays we do, maybe 100 years we didn't know, but now that we know that this is harmful, can we justify you know, the, y using these substances? It's a hard question and I think it's a hard topic, but I think yeah. again, people need to know the implications and you know and decide but really it's quite frightening from hearing but informative thank you so much pleasure um, once again any thoughts any ideas any questions please do send us through in the um, um, the email on your screen um, hopefully we can send some sort of response um, directly from Dr Yasser as well once again thank you doctor for and your we have time. Um, mentioned um, doctor has mentioned about the smoking cessation service yeah. in the NHS so please do log on to their website um, if you Google it, um, yeah, so www.nhs.uk forward slash smoke free. Smoke free. Smoke free. Yeah, yeah. smoke free. So it's brilliant okay. to there. On that okay. note, uh, we're going to be joined by Sayyid Ali Nawab um, for some jurisprudential issues uh, and some actionable insights um, in that field. So please do join us after the break. Thank you. <laughs>